And so we know it's hot outside, right? I think we've established that. While a lot of us have the luxury of staying inside on days like this, those of us who have office jobs, getting into your car even at the end of the day to get home can still be brutal. So we wanted to do a little science experiment and see what is the best option to park in the shade, use a windshield shade to block the sun, or just park wherever you want without any kind of protection. So our Amy Holly has been doing this experiment for us today out in our parking lot, and she joins us with what uh, she's found today. Hi, Amy. Good afternoon to you. Hi, Johnny About three hours ago at one o'clock, we put thermometers in all three of these cars. In fact, one of them is yours. And what we have found out is, when it gets this hot, it doesn't really matter what kind of the, what kind of temperatures they are because they're all considerably dangerous to people who are sitting inside. This one, fully in the sun, is way past what the thermometer is measuring, probably 130, 140 degrees. This one, your car with the windshield shade. Let's see what this says. Wow, that door is hot. 120 degrees. And the one that we tried to park in the shade, the little bit that we could find today. Let's see what this says. If you look through the windshield, it says almost 120 degrees. Now consider this. When you have temperatures like this inside of a car, it is like an oven. And consider this. The government says that you should start cooking, say, pork or ham at 145 degrees. So it, we're not too far off here. In fact, the one over there registered at 130 to 140 degrees. So it is literally like an oven inside. And Kids and Cars Organization told me today, a child inside of a car like this can be in danger in just minutes. And 120 degrees is when your skin starts to burn if it touches the surface of 120 degrees. So tonight at 6, we're going to go out and talk to the fire department, have a heat sensor, and look at common kids' surfaces and see exactly how hot they are. We went to the pool, we went to the playground, and you're going to be surprised how hot everything really was that our kids are touching on a mm. hot summer day like this. For the yeah. now, Amy Holly. Okay, thank you so much, Amy. We look forward to that at 6 o'clock, too. And we wanted to know how else the heat can impact your car. So first, there are a lot of us who like to let an AC, for example, cool it down before we hop in. But AAA says that is, in fact, not a good idea because it's hard on the engine. You should avoid letting your car idle for too long when it's this hot. So that engine obviously creates a lot of energy and heat. Now, don't wash your car with cold water after it's been sitting in the sun, either. That shock of the cold water hitting the extra hot glass can actually crack it. And here's something any of us can do. Check your car's tire pressure. Underinflated tires produce more friction on the roads and that can cause a blowout. And here's another great idea we got from AAA, building a summer emergency kit for your vehicle. We never know when something may happen. The biggest addition is drinking water in case you're stuck waiting for help on the side of the road in a hot day. Also, grab a set of jumper cables and put it in your vehicle and keep an extra jug of antifreeze to help with an overheated engine. Other suggestions for the kit include a few snacks that will not perish and a basic uh, set of tools.